have here a very lovely pinafore. Um, there is a underdress, and it is a dress in and of itself, and then an overlapping pinafore. Um, this, it was, you can just wear one or the other by itself, but I love how this turned out. I adore the dinosaur fabric. I love how the buttons fasten in the back. I love the pockets. <laughs> they are reinforced so you can actually put things in there. Overall, I think it's just a really cute outfit. It is a little bit challenging to do. Um, there is a few things that I would change if I was to do it again. Namely, zippers. <laughs> At least for the underdress. Because I feel like there's just too many buttons and too much pressure on the center back because the buttons are in the same place on both sides. Um, I also have a little bit of a gap. I might just put like a little charm or a bow or something there um, to kind of detract from that. But overall, I do like how this project turned out. We are going to be going with a totally different type of dress. So this is a pattern that I've had. I am going to go and make A slash B kind of. So B has pockets. So this is the B part. So this is the overdress. Um, as you can tell, I don't do frilly for the most part. Um, <laughs> this is our front, which is cut on the fold. We have our back. I just realized looking at this that I have one skirt piece instead of three because there should be a different skirt piece for the back. I will figure that out later. I, if I have more fabric, I'll go ahead and cut out more out of this. If I don't, then problem solving because it's also the back of the skirt or back of the dress. So it's not going to be a big deal if I can, if I use what the underdress is. This actually goes right here for because this is going to have buttonholes instead of a zipper which i'm excited about because i'm not the biggest fan of buttonholes or biggest fan of zippers i use them i just not the biggest fan of them that is to reinforce where those buttonholes go this is actually to reinforce the v in the skirt in order to ensure that when you do button it up it lays nicely so this is going to end up being sewn where the V, like, because you're going to have to cut it down, well, not cut it, because it's just going to be further down the seam, you're going to ensure that when you put that on, it's going to fit nicely. Um, the original other half of the skirt is cut on the fold. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up. I'm not going to do that. Um, the reason why is because if you're going to cut it and make it into a V shape and then add these, that makes no sense to me versus just going down and having a seam down the center back. So I will use these to reinforce what V there will be, but I'm just going to go ahead and splash it down when I figure out what fabric I'm going to be making that back skirt panel out of. So um, I'm going to set up the underdress or regular dress, depending on how you look at it, which is going to be A, but in a different color. Is my under dress, which can also be a regular dress. Isn't that going to be gorgeous with that archaeological or er, dinosaur fabric that I have at the top? I am super excited for this. Okay, modifications I've already made. I am not doing tie sleeves. <laughs> I will gladly do cap sleeves with an elastic in it. I do not believe in doing like the tie sleeves that are pretty, but it distracts too much. And especially with how plain this fabric is, you're not gonna really notice that so much. Um, I will be interfacing this collar piece. I haven't done that yet because I want to give a quick disclaimer. Use the interface you feel comfortable with. Fusible, sew in, doesn't matter. I personally use fusible because it's easy and it tends to be cheap. However, use your personal preference here. If you would like the tie sleeves, go for it. I just changed this because of the fact that I am not a biggest fan of it. And if it's going to be something that I give away, I want it to be something I like. Or especially if I'm just going to keep it until maybe I have kids someday down the future. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so a lot of these pieces are the same. I actually have two skirts here. <laughs> I don't know why I don't have two skirts of the dinosaur fabric. I will go see if I have more of it or if I have more of this one and I just make the back into this color. 
again, this has the, um, both of these are cut on the fold. The back one I'm just going to snip up. I'm, that's a modification I'm going to make to this pattern. Uh, another thing is that the lining is the same as the front piece. If I'm not lining in a, if the outside fabric isn't something that I'm short on, or if it's something that I know that makes a perfectly fine liner, I don't believe in just using two different fabrics to differentiate as long as you don't get confused when you're seaming. That's my personal preference. So I'm going to set up machines for this. Obviously this is going to require a different color than the pinafore. I do not have um, a lot of brown thread, so I'm probably going to use black on this and white on that one, but and then use brown as the this is the seams that you see. <laughs> so let's jump right into it. Usable interfacing. Make sure that you have the glue side up, the wrong sides down on the glue, right sides facing up. For the color, make sure that you mirror it. So you have it folded together like this and you make sure that it's mirrored. So for this one, the technique I'm gonna use, I don't cut this first and then do it. I iron it and then cut around it. This one, I'm going to cheat and use parchment paper because the piece is not big enough that I can just use the iron on the center of the piece and go out to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and just high heat melt this glue. It may stick to the part or to the wax paper. That is okay. You just want to make sure that you have it fusing to the fabric underneath. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Okay. Peel it off. And if it tears the excess, don't worry too much about it because you've already melted the glue. This is trying to tear the underside. Not this. The reason I do this is because every time that I have tried to cut the interfacing and then stick it on, I always end up with blank spaces that don't end up fitting. So, now these are more or less fused, except for this part that wasn't even touching the wax paper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out very loosely around that point. Um, and I'm cutting off all of the used glue because that's not going to do me any good. Now I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to go over with the iron again to make sure all the edges are fused and then move on. Well, I did not have any more of this dinosaur fabric for the other part of the skirt. So I went ahead and instead the front is going to be this lovely brown flower pattern and then the back is going to be the dinosaur and then the bodice is going to be the dinosaur and even better the pockets are still going to be the dinosaur on that flower. So what I need to do now is serge the sides together before I do my seams. Now, this is a pattern that can go either direction, which is nice. So, and that's with both of them. So I'm going to have the dark brown flowers with a dinosaur on either side. Um, and I'm actually really excited about this because of the fact that I thought that my design was going to be pretty before, but I think having that third type of fabric is going to just bring it up a little bit more. So, surge all the way down the seam. And it doesn't quite match because I didn't even use the pattern. I just kind of guesstimated. 
based on the dinosaur, which is okay. Um, because I'm making sure that all of that excess is at the hem, which I can just cut right off. Having your hems be slightly off is okay. Much better than, you know, anywhere else that you need it to be more exact. So again, I'm going to just run it through the serger. Remember to leave a tail. And then, doesn't that just look really good? I'm super happy with this. So we're done. So I have my dinosaur bodice ready to go. Um, I will, this will be the same process for the underdress except for the sleeves. So I will film the sleeves for the underdress, but it's the same process. I pin this button interfaced extra piece to the back of the outside fabric, which of course the lining is the same fabric, so it's not a big deal. And then I'm gonna sew this to both sides of the back. I'm also going to sew the shoulder seams, and then we'll turn to the next part, which is the armholes. So, or, and then we put everything together. So, I did forget to backstitch there. Oh, well, easy enough to fix. Okay, now that the front and back are done, I'm going to go ahead and pin them right sides together and sew the neckline and the armholes together. I am not going down the side seams. So first things first, I'm going to do the other armhole. I did movie magic on the other one, or I may have forgotten to hit record and hit picture instead. Um, so you're just going all the way around this armhole and just the armhole itself. You are going to then turn and clip it.
remember to only clip that space between the edge of the fabric and the thread. If you accidentally cut the thread, you're going to have to go back and re-sew it. And then you're going to sew the entirety of the neckline and the back. So you're going to start with the back, sew the neckline, and then sew the other back. You'll notice that right here I don't have the interfacing. The interfacing is on the other side. Cut my thread while I'm at it. I do reinforce these corners by back stitching a little bit. And there is my interface piece. And that will actually be the piece of where the buttonholes go. Okay. So I'm going to have to trim these corners. Trim diagonally. Do not cut the thread and then go ahead and clip the curves. And then I'm going to be pushing this flap right here um, to the front and turning it inside out. So we're going ahead and sewing the underarms together. These make a really nice finish when they're done. And I forgot to backstitch at the beginning again. To be fair, I'm doing most of these videos all in one day, and I've only had one cup of coffee. But, no one's going to see that seam because it's going to be on the inside, so the only person who's going to know is you, me, and everybody who watches this. Other side. Should back stitch this time. And we're done with that one. Um I'm going to top stitch off camera because I really need the camera out of my way to do that. But I'm going to top stitch the armholes and the neckline to make sure everything stays flat and pretty. Then we got to worry about pockets. So for the pockets, I need to sew the curves but not the top. And then clip, turn it inside out sew the top, and then sew the whole thing to the skirt. As I've already said multiple times, do not cut the thread when you're clipping! It makes it incredible incredibly annoying. And you don't have to clip where there is a straight seam. So I just end up clipping the bottom half of this. Somewhat quickly because 
Okay. And then flip inside out. I'm going to use this side of my pocket because that's got a really pretty T-Rex towards the center of it. And then I end up just going like this until my seam lays mostly flat. This is going to be the front of my pocket. I'm just going to grab both ends, pinch the same distance apart, and then pull. And it turns down in a very nice straight line. I'm going to top stitch that off camera where I can, you know, get my face action somewhat closer to the machine like two feet behind it so that I'm not in the tripod's way. Okay. And then sew it to the skirt. So I will show the sewing to the skirt as soon as I get to that part. I have top stitched the neckline and the arms. I will have to pick out these three seams to turn them inside out for the final stitching portion, but I'm not worried about that at this time. Um, mostly because it is the end of my day. I am trying to work on this. So I'm trying to get the last few projects done. Okay, so this is my front panels and these are my pockets. I have them so that when I had the fabric folded in half, they were the same exact position apart. Now, looking at this, they're too close. So the good thing is, is that you don't have to commit the first time you do something. And this, I could go pull out the pattern and see exactly where they put the pockets, but I think that's a pretty boring way to kind of do everything. So go ahead. So I'm going to fold my skirt in half, or rather I'm going to match the se side seams for the front panel and focus on the front panel. So I'm going to put this one a little more this way. Right. And then I'm only going to attack two places. Oh, a little down. Okay, I'm going to put it one right here and one right here. Okay, this is still folded in half and I'm going to flip it over. So I can feel on the other side where these two corners are. I'm going to go here and here, and then I'm gonna tack them on, on just the one layer we're currently on, I'm not punching through to the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and tack them down. So I already sewed the top, so all I need to do is sew around the other, I would say three sides, except it's curved. So holding thread in place, go forward, go backward, and then just hold everything flat as you just go around the edges. And then you're going to repeat this on the second one, which I'm going to do off camera because this is already difficult enough the first time. Because I really should have done this before I sewed the so uh, side panels on. Because so I got a lot more fabric to deal with. And I'm jostling the camera quite a bit. So I did unrip part of these seams and then press them flat and so that they're symmetrical um, in preparation for the skirt. Now the next part of the skirt is actually this fancy little flat band 
that goes into the skirt. I may or may not have just dropped this in my pet's water fountain beside me because the wind or the fans took it with it. Um, get this attached to the skirt. So because of the fact that I didn't keep the skirt in one piece and then cut a slip for this, I'm going to have to serge it to get it to go that direction. So first thing I need to do is see how far up and down I need to go in order for this lap to work. And the whole reason for this is so that there is a V down that is finished for this lap piece to attach to. So looking at this folded in half, I'm going to stop right here because folded in half for the lap piece. Okay, right here is where I need to stop. So turn on the machine. Everything's ready to go. You'll see that I'm starting to go towards the hem. And the reason for this is it is a lot easier for me to not cut where I don't want to intend to when I start with the needles going to the place I want them to go. Okay. Remember to leave your chain. Okay. So I'm going to migrate machines in a moment. But now I have this V. And the point of this is to put this lap piece down on this V and sew it all the way across. Now it does not look like I left enough room, which is okay because serger ends tend to be quick and easy to rip out, but I don't want to rip out too much. So I'm going to move to the machine and show you how to do it with the actual sewing machine. Back here, I have other projects involving white thread. Um, I am what I affectionately call myself a batch uh, sewer. So I sew everything in batches instead of going back and forth on um, changing the thread, changing the setup. So I'm everything that goes on the machine with white thread goes on the machine with white thread all at the same time. So in case you're wondering, that would be why. So again, this is super easy. Just cut a little bit. And it will start to unravel. Probably want to about there. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way. Opening that side piece right there, this one right here. It will gather in the center and that is normal, so do not worry about that. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get this to lay as flat as possible and still have this lap the correct length. So, still got a bulge in the center, so we're just going to go a little bit more, a little bit more, there we go, to right there. Now I'm going to secure that serge hem with a pin to make sure that it does not feel any pressure to unravel anymore. Do not sew over your pins. Okay, 
I've never actually done this method before, so if I sound like I know what I'm talking about, it's, it's a pretense. <laughs> I've just sewn a lot. <laughs> okay. So, then, we're supposed to fold this over with the raw edge folded over, over on top of that, and stitch it down. So, okay. So, I have this folded so that this raw edge is overlapping the seam we just made. So we can top stitch it down. And because this will be the side that you see, I'm going to flip my pins over the moment I feel comfortable they're in the correct spot. And top stitch that down. And then this will fold into a V. Under the skirt. See, I told you it would bunch up. But and because the raw top or the raw edges are going to be going into the bodice, I'm not worried about back stitching on this particular part. So clip, clip, and then looks great on the other side. We're good. Now, um, the next piece is to do your basting for your skirt. So this is where you would gather it and then kind of bunch it up into the bodice. So what you want to do is have long threads and then make your stitch length longer. And just baste all the way down. Some people also choose to make the stitch tension looser. I do not care to do that. I stop at the seam because it is unwieldy to try and do all this uh, an entire seam on its own each for each panel. So I do each panel individually. The center front I fold in half and I pin to the center front fold of the bodice to make it match. And all you have to do is tug on one of the two threads on either end and then kind of move the bunch up fabric down the thread path to ensure that it's going to distribute evenly. It does take a while on a skirt this size but it is so well worth it and it will look so gorgeous when you're done. Remember to cut long threads at the end. long thread and then we're done and well I need to gather things off camera all right I will be back okay, so we're at the point where I'm connecting the bodice to the skirt it is actually so that the two bodice pieces are eating the skirt so that the skirt is sitting in between the two layers of bodice so that there's no raw edge on the inside not the most fun to do, which is why I didn't do that on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to essentially top stitch this down. Um, I may do two layers of stitching instead of one, depending on how well everything kind of behaves with this first go round. I should have plenty of seam allowance.
it is just a lot of skirt. Okay, so here's my first seam. One panel down. Okay, so this is looking pretty good on the other side. So you can see that I'm catching it, so let's just keep going. There are strings that you can see, and that is okay because I can go ahead and trim those later. I just didn't want the risk. Well, in the middle of this. I'm going to go ahead and go off camera because I need to be able to see more of what I'm doing and this camera angle is obviously not doing that for me. So I will be right back. I finished that. It turned out really, really good. So it's connected on both sides. Nothing I need to do. Of course, you can tell on this side that I trimmed all of those threads that were off. Um, now I need to hem this. So... Because I'm just hemming it, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, the best way to hem is just to fold over twice. You could do a variety of other methods, but for this, that's just the easiest way to go. So just start and go all the way in a circle. I suppose you could have hemmed this before you put the bodice on. Okay, so you overlap this, go backward, go forward, and done. Now repeat everything for the underdress, except I will show you how to put on the sleeves. When you are doing buttonholes, you have to see whether or not your machine has an automatic buttonhole function. This particular machine does, and I'm using a baby lock jubilant. Um, it actually allows me to set the button into the lever itself, or into the foot itself, so that I always have a buttonhole that is exactly the same size as my button. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on. Um, but refer to the user manual for your machine, because every machine is different. Um, the machine that I personally own, my Viking, 
does has an automatic button holder, but it is not set by how big the button is in the guide. You actually have to set the millimeters of how long it is into the machine itself. So I've already marked where I want my button holes to start. This needs to match in the guide right here, which is really hard to see, and for that I apologize. Um, because I want a button that, or I already put my buttons on here to figure out where I wanted the holes. Always do a test run. Every time. I'm just going to say that right now. Always do a test run. So I am making this as vertical as I can. I have everything lined up. I'm on this plate. I am trying to be as straight as possible because it will definitely show when I am done. Okay, I am moving maybe that way. Okay, so this, as long as I have the settings started, all I have to do is press start. Or put down the foot as it may be. all of my threads. Now you can fray check this before you cut it. Um, it kind of depends on what material you're working with. Because this is already reinforced because it's got that interfacing layer in it, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it right at the end right here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my seam ripper I'm going to start at the end and just cut in between these two lines. I know it's hard to see. Of course my seam ripper is not having a jolly good time going through six layers of fabric. And then there's my hole. I use this to prevent me from going too far when I'm cutting. And then my buttons, because I already have spares, will fit right through. There you go. Okay, so the underdress has a collar. So one side of one, uh, one piece is interfaced and the other are not. So I have right sides together and you're going to sew down each straight edge and then the big curve. So, clip your strings, clip the corners of where it meets, and then clip the curve all the way around. And remember, don't cut the thread. You will not have a good day if you do that. Turn right side out and pin. I always love when there's multiples of the same object so I can get one to a point. Okay, so I'm just going to top stitch this because it's not going to be easy to top stitch if I wait until it's already attached. So I'm going to go ahead and just top stitch. And as always, this is easier when I don't have the camera in my way.
rinse and repeat to the other one and then you're ready to attach them to the bodice so the collar is going to be pinned to the front and then kind of center front have them touch pin around major deviation I'm doing here from the pattern is they want you to do the bodice with the collar the same as the pinafore and then add the sleeves to which I said why why do that to me? So I decided to nix that. Uh, <laughs> there's no nice way for me to say that. I have decided that is not how I'm going to do this because of the fact that if I do it that way, then I'm not going to be able to have a very nice, clean sleeve. So I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> um... So I will have to jump on the serger in between because if I am correct in how I'm going to do this, I will need to serge the edge right here so that it does lay cleanly. Um, I'm just not willing to fight with this bodice and do it the other way at all, ever. Um, <laughs> it's just, I didn't feel like that. So when you do sleeves... I already basted stitched it and then you gather it um, I skipped one fourth of the gather gathering just to show you so pin the half the halfway point of the curve to the seam um, that may not be perfect for front and back but the reason for that is you need the same amount of fabric on either side of the arm um, and then when you gather you're gonna grab one of these two strings and then just tug if it'll behave and just give me one so you're going to pull and it's going to gather and then you just move the fabric along the thread. Be very gentle because if you snap the thread, you're going to have to baste stitch all over again. Um, I am not putting any gathering on this part. So I'm just smoothing this out because I gathered too. I start with gathering too much and then I sort of push it around until it looks nicer and it loosens up to the same length as below. Okay. And then you're just going to sew across, do a stay stitch across the top. Then you're going to put the other bodice on, and you're going to follow the same directions as if you would for the pinafore for sewing the bodices together. Um, and then we'll jump into the deviation for the sleeve. So I turned them inside out, and it worked! Okay, so I have my collar here, my sleeve here. So for my sleeve, I just need to sew it, and then sew the inside of the bodice. In order to sew this together, I want it to come out this way, but I want to French seam it instead of putting it on the serger. So what I'm going to do is I have it pinned so I have it which way I want it to come out. So I'm going to pull out the pins because to sew a French seam, you sew the wrong sides together, flip it over, and then sew the right sides together. So I'm going to pull everything where I want it. And I'm sewing a very tiny seam. There's my scissors. And I'm only sewing this sleeve. I'm not sewing anything else. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it inside out. 
and sew that same sleeve portion so that it's enclosed, that raw seam is enclosed. And the awesome part about this is that it makes a very finished look without it being obnoxious. I'll show you what it looks like on the right side and then we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the sleeve. So this is what the wrong side looks like and this is what the right side looks like. It looks totally normal. There are a few strands sticking out which normally I would have clipped this but due to time constraints I did not. Um, and then you spread open the um, inside it, or the front and back or the lining layer and the non-lining layer of the bodice and then you just sew those together and so you have a really nice finished look at the end so here is my bodice and its lining. And I'm making sure the sleeve is out of the way so I don't end up sewing it. Okay. Trim, trim all the time. And now, with right sides out, I have a very neat looking armhole. There are no excessive stitches. It was super easy to turn in the right sides out. And then to finish this cap sleeve, I'm just going to do a basic fold over narrow hem. I'm not doing a casing on it. I think just a basic narrow cap sleeve will look awesome on this because I mean how well nah I'm gonna sew a casing on it <laughs> I'm gonna put elastic in it let's just do it <laughs> I have too much fun with the look of a cap sleeve or a really poofy sleeve like this that has a draw an elastic on the end so I'm gonna do that um if you need to know what a casing looks like, um, you fold it over twice, so eh, I could turn it inside out to begin with. Um, fold it over twice. I'm just going to use a fourth of an inch elastic, so it does not need to be a big casing. And so, on the edge of this, I leave half of this finger of an opening right where the seam is. And the reason I do that is because if I ever want to replace the elastic, I can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do this off camera because it'll be a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing if I can actually put my face closer to the machine instead of being two feet back and trying to see what I'm doing through a camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have Jarvis currently playing at my feet. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a casing in. The rest of this construction is the same as the pinafore. So I'm going to attach the skirt. I'm going to do some top stitching. So at this point, these are all the deviations that the underdress is going to have different from the pinafore. It's just that it has sleeves and a collar. And all I'm going to do is top stitch all the way, well, if this was all the way out, all the way around the collar, around the back, put the buttons in, put the button holes in, and we will have a completed, um, underdress and I will show it again and I uh, I showed it at the beginning or I will show it at the beginning I will show it again when it's done to give you a better idea of how it differs from the paint of horror. like this video and you want to see more just like it please like comment and subscribe this is Ranger just being a rush so much. But it's summertime, so. Oh, oh.
keep getting all the brushed. All the brushed. Oh, we love being brushed. Mm. Look at all that hair. Alright, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.